Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name's Luke, and today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at Disco Elysium Final Core, and it's one of those rare games which you've probably never heard of, but you most certainly should have. Taking place within a large city, still recovering from a war decades past, the game sees you playing as a detective tasked with solving a grisly murder, and it's essentially a neo-noir detective story underpinned by elements of classic RPG games. Now before we get started, full disclosure on this one, I'm about 10 hours into my first playthrough, so I won't be rating the game in this review, but this is one that Alex has played through several times, and I definitely regret not playing it sooner. With that said though, hit that like button, subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest deals, reviews and Game Pass content, and let's get into it. So as detailed in the intro, Disco Elysium's story centres around a murder which you as a detective have been tasked to look into, however things are made a little more difficult by the fact that you're also suffering from amnesia brought on by a 3 day bender, and you can't even remember your name let alone where you are or what you got up to over the past few days. After meeting up with your interim partner for the case, Kim Kitsuragi, who also acts as the voice of reason and professionalism and brings a sense of equilibrium to the party, the two of you head out into the city to do your detective business, but you soon find out that the murder is only the tip of the iceberg in an ongoing conflict, and you're going to have to get your hands very dirty indeed in order to get to the bottom of it. Aside from the main storyline, there are also countless side missions for you to undertake should you choose to do so, and the story can take some very unexpected turns depending on your actions and who you decide to help. Now my synopsis of the game's narrative really doesn't do justice to just how fantastically weird and wonderful the writing in Disco Elysium really is, nor does it even begin to explain how much depth there is to the world and its characters. Disco Elysium is heavily narrative driven, and aside from the main storyline, the game explores everything from the world's political and cultural history, wars and current affairs, to matters of philosophy and social ideologies, which on the surface may seem like pretty heavy subject matter but the way in which it's delivered really takes the edge off it. Alongside character dialogue, you've also got the internal thoughts and feelings of your character's own psyche chipping in. For instance, your empathy could comment on something that a character said or did, and I really love the way in which these not only help to break up potentially dry topics, they also add an offbeat pace to the narrative, injecting plenty of humour and weirdness into it. And I have to say that I was more than just a little surprised the first time that my character's necktie decided to speak to him. Now one final point I want to mention is that the direction of the game's narrative is highly dependent on the decisions and observations you make while playing, and many of these are done at the roll of a dice with your probability of success determined by your character's stats, and so repeat playthroughs are necessary to discover everything the game has to offer. All in all, I found that while Disco Elysium's murder investigation acts to kickstart the story and plays a solid role throughout, it was actually the depth and detail of the rest of the game's characters and world and your interactions within it that really provide a memorable gameplay experience. So gameplay wise then, Disco Elysium kind of plays like a mixture between a point and click adventure game and a visual novel, with you exploring the city, collecting items and working out how to progress the storyline, but as I alluded to before, it also incorporates elements of classic role playing games into its gameplay. I will say now though that the game is pretty text heavy, which may put some people off, but this final cut version adds full voice acting, and it really goes a long way to making the narrative more enjoyable if you're not a fan of reading. Now to start with, your core objective in the game is to investigate and solve the murder case, and the game takes place over several days, with different characters appearing in different locations depending on the time of day. Uncovering the reason and motive behind the murder is no simple task though, and there's plenty of investigative work to be done which involves interrogating various suspects, solving the odd puzzle, and a reasonable amount of grease and of palms to gain favour and information from certain individuals, which usually comes in the form of a quest line. Regardless of the path you take through the game though, you'll constantly encounter situations which challenge your character in different ways. For instance, you may be trying to intimidate a suspect or obtain important information from a set of footprints, and this is where the game's RPG mechanics come into play. 
Now upon beginning the game, you're offered a selection of archetypes to choose from, which determines your core character stats, and these are divided into intellect, psyche, physique and motorics. Each of these contains six different attributes, which include things like your character's logic, empathy and reaction speed, and depending on the situation, one of these attributes is put to the test, with a dice roll determining the outcome of the situation, and the attributes level influencing your chances of success or failure. Dice rolls themselves come in two different flavours, those being red ones which you only get a single attempt at, and white ones which you can roll again after improving your attributes, and there are several ways in which to do this. The first of these comes from assigning skill points which are obtained by earning XP and levelling up. The second are modifiers, granted from equipping different pieces of clothing which can be bought or scavenged, and these generally have a positive effect on one attribute whilst reducing another. And the final attribute modifiers come in the form of thoughts that you have when encountering certain situations. You're able to research and internalise these thoughts, permanently etching them into your thought cabinet slots, and in addition to the stat bonuses or penalties these provide, thoughts also come with additional effects, and these can really help to add diversity to your character's build. Now hopefully that basic overview has given you an idea of what to expect from the game, and I wanted to try and keep things relatively simple, but there are other elements such as how the decisions you make impact on your relationship with your partner as well as your character's ideals, and I really like the way that these drove the narrative in different directions. In one playthrough you could for instance play the straight up good cop and toe the line with every step that you take, while the next could see you being a complete asshole to everyone and causing as much anarchy as possible, and each of these would result in you experiencing very different sides of the game. Me personally, I kind of stuck to the middle ground and based my decisions on my own ideals, but I will say that it's really the attributes and dice rolls which determine the paths available to you, and it can be a little difficult to know where to spend your skill points if it's your first time playing. So far though, I have to say that my gameplay experience with Disco Elysium has been a very positive one. I love the game's narrative, especially the internal dialogue that your character has with his own mind, and I was really impressed by the freedom of choice given to you throughout the playthrough, and how the classic RPG mechanics are creatively incorporated into the gameplay. So graphically, Disco Elysium has to be one of the most visually striking games that I've played in a long time, and it features a distinctive oil painting art style which I can't say that I've seen used in a game like this before. There's been an impressive amount of detail poured into creating each of the game's areas, and it really brings the world to life, giving the city's streets and buildings a real sense of history, albeit a rather dismal and depressive one. I also love the miniature portraits created for each of the game's characters, especially your own character, the detective, with his red alky nose, sunken eyes and unconvincing smile. Overall I thought Disco Elysium was just a fantastic looking game, and it runs without a hitch, at least on the Xbox Series X. Audio wise then, while the sound effects don't play a huge part, what little there are are well done, and the ambient sounds of the environments add plenty of atmosphere to the game's areas. The use of music in the game also feels pretty reserved, and it doesn't play constantly, which I actually kind of liked, but when it does pipe up, it really adds to the drama of the game, and the composition of the soundtrack is actually pretty fantastic. It's incredibly atmospheric, and it really fits the tone and pace of the game perfectly. Now as I said before, this final cut version of Disco Elysium adds full voice acting for all of the game's dialogue, and the overall quality of this voice acting is excellent. Not only does it make the game's text heavy narrative easier to swallow, it also helps separate the character's inner dialogue from the actual spoken conversations, and it really does a great job of bringing the game's characters to life. So the final verdict on this one then, and I have to say that Disco Elysium is a game that is confident in its weirdness, and it's definitely my kind of weirdness. Everything from its narrative and the pacing of the gameplay, to its visuals, audio and voice acting is masterfully done, and while I can see how the copious amounts of dialogue could put some people off, the voice acting does make it much more accessible. 
thanks to its branching dialogue paths and the multitude of directions in which your decisions can take you in, the game also has plenty of replayability, and though those dice rolls do play a big part in deciding that direction, once you know what you're doing, you are able to steer it in whichever way you see fit. Now like I said at the start of this review, I am still working my way through the game so I'm not going to be giving an official rating on this one, but going by what I've experienced so far, it would be getting at least a solid 9 out of 10 from me, and if you're a fan of narrative driven games or just love a good film noir detective story, then I highly recommend giving Disco Elysium a go. And so that about wraps up this review of Disco Elysium, so do you think it's one for you and are you going to be picking it up? Or have you already played it and either loved it or hated it? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you've not already done so, then consider subscribing to the channel, especially if you want to keep up to date with the latest deals, reviews and Game Pass news. And as always, I want to thank you all once again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone, take care.